Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and let's talk about PCOS. So, so many of you guys have asked me to do a video on PCOS and where the ketogenic diet and fasting fit into PCOS. So let me start off by saying that some of these more complicated conditions, you rarely have one problem associated with it. So you've got to look at a variety of things. So today I want to give you four different thoughts and four different pieces that I look at when I'm working with a patient with PCOS. Now, for some of you, you're going to, you're going to fix, do one of those pieces and PCOS will absolutely change for you. For some of you, you're gonna to have to dive in and work on all four pieces, okay? So I would take notes. If you have PCOS, I'm gonna give you a lot of different ideas and some of them hopefully you've been doing and if you haven't, let's just create a checklist for you, okay? Let's start off with what PCOS is. So in the most basic sense, we know that there is a problem with the hypothalamus and the pituitary of the brain. We know that there is a challenge with the communication from that part of your brain to your ovaries. Whenever there is a dysfunctional endocrine gland, we can, in the endocrine system, we never look at it like it's just the endocrine glands problem. This is why so many of you have thyroid problems and you get put on medication and your thyroid, the symptoms of your thyroid problems don't go away because you have to look at the whole feedback loop. So same thing with adrenal problems. Those of you that have adrenal issues, it's never just an adrenal issue. You've got to look at the whole feedback loop. So in PCOS, we're looking at the hypothalamus and the pituitary up here in the brain and its feedback loop with your ovaries. Now, the classic symptom of PCOS, or the classic symptoms that a lot of you are experiencing are very irregular periods, cysts on your ovaries, sometimes very painful, and some of you are experiencing high levels of testosterone. That's leading to, especially uh, for um, you know, women, we don't really enjoy getting facial hair. And a lot of people with PCOS will end up with facial hair because of the high levels of testosterone. So those are kind of the classic things. So the four things I want you to look at. First, you've got to look at insulin resistance, okay? And if you're on my YouTube channel, you're probably already looking at insulin resistance. You probably already come to the ketogenic diet. Let me tell you what happens with insulin resistance. As your body, as your cells become inflamed and insulin cannot get into the cells, it actually triggers your pancreas to start to secrete more insulin. And when that insulin goes up, what happens is it signals to the ovaries to put out more testosterone. And that increase in testosterone is what starts the whole PCOS cycle for you. So. If you haven't done the ketogenic diet yet, this, you're hearing this for the first time, I really encourage you to step into the ketogenic diet, step into fasting. You are gonna find so many of your symptoms will be improved with that, okay? So second thing, we need to look at this whole access. So whenever we're dealing with these endocrine organs, I always go to the hypothalamus and the pituitary first. Those are the parts of the brain that don't have any protection. So toxins are going to affect that part of the brain the most. So heavy metals, we're back at heavy metals. In my office, we put together a uh, multi-therapeutic approach of the keto diet, fasting, detoxing. We look at all the different pieces that will play into that. So if you are doing the ketogenic diet, if you are fasting and your PCOS symptoms are not improving, then you're gonna to want to dive into looking at toxicity. Specifically, I would dive in and get your heavy metals tested, okay? So you can also look at things like BPA plastics, glyphosate, mold, maybe you're living in a moldy house. It is that toxic load that's going to really start to throw your whole cycle or th this whole feedback loop off, and you probably need a really deep detox. Okay, third thing, and I'm gonna put, I know you guys here on my channel, you love studies. So I'm gonna put this in the notes section. Here's a study done that says uh, PCOS may be an autoimmune disorder. And it goes on, the study goes on to say that low levels of progesterone cause an overstimulation of the immune system, which causes your body to produce more estrogen. 
And it's in this overstimulation of your immune system that your body starts to secrete autoantibodies. And so there is an association between PCOS and other autoimmune diseases. And if you're one of those people who this is you, you've got Hashimoto's, you've got lupus, you've got other autoimmune conditions. The, the challenge for you is you're, you don't need to go after the PCOS per se, but you need to go after why your body ha is having this overstimulated immune system. And what we're seeing is a lot of times it's an imbalance in your progesterone, it's an imbalance in overproduction of estrogen. So if this is you, if you have those multiple autoimmune conditions, then this is where one of my favorite tests come into play, a Dutch test. You need to know where your hormones are at. This is the best hormone test out there. It is better than a blood test. So we'll put a link in there. It will tell you your testosterone levels. It'll tell you progesterone. It will tell you uh, uh, estrogen, your estrogen metabolites, your adrenals. I, I kid you not, this is one of my favorite tests and it will give you a complete picture of what's going on. And it will help you get in the ballpark to see if this is uh, has an autoimmune condition for you, okay? So that's the third thing. And then the fourth thing, there is 42% of people, women, who have PCOS have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So there is a gut issue to PCOS. Now, irritable bowel syndrome is just like a, a, a trash can diagnosis for your gut is really out of balance. So you need to go searching for what is causing that irritable bowel situation. And most of the time it's coming from either something like candida or it's coming from parasites or it's coming from some bad bacteria in your body. So again, this is where testing comes in handy. And I, you guys have heard me talk about this before. I'm a huge fan of the gut zoomer. That's the test that we use. It will tell me if you have parasites. It will tell me if you have candida. Um, and it'll tell me if you have enough good bacteria to be able to ward off an autoimmune situation. Okay? So four major things you have to look at. You've got to look at insulin resistance. That's what I've been teaching you guys here on this channel is how to help that insulin resistance. Okay, second thing, you've got to look at, um, at this whole access. You've got to look at the whole, we call it the HPO access. So up here I was doing a, actually a video for my ketobiotic woman course in my academy on the HPA access. But for you guys with PCOS, I really want you to think about the HPO access. Um, and then your third thing, you got to identify if it's an autoimmune condition. And this is where something like the Dutch test will come in handy. And then the fourth thing is you've got to look at your gut. And, and when the gut is out of balance, when you have dysbiosis in the gut, it tends to cause something called leaky gut. Leaky gut tends to cause inflammation. Inflammation cause, causes insulin resistance. And now you're back at problem number one. So this is what I mean, is that the, most of you watching this video and many of you that are following uh, my channel, you know that you've got all four of these things. So instead of guessing test, dive in and test them. Um, and again, I'll put the links to how you go about getting those tests um, on, the, on the show notes. Okay, the other question that we got a lot of is, okay, well, can't you give me a, a supplement to cure this? And I'm gonna make some recommendations for supplements. Um, now, understand, there, the supplement is not the cure. There are some really cool things that you can do to balance the, the symptoms that you're experiencing with, from PCOS with supplements. For example, my absolute favorite supplement is called Femicrine. You've probably, those of you who've watched me talk about perimenopause and postmenopause symptoms, you know that I'm a huge fan of Femicrine. Femicrine helps to balance out progesterone and estrogen. Let's go back to what we learned from this, this research study that it's low progesterone, high estrogen that can cause an autoimmune response. So Femicrine is really good to bring that back in balance. Again, I'm gonna leave the link on there for you. Second thing, in insulin resistance, you've got a major issue going on with your pancreas. 
So you're going to want to, you know, your pancreas is overworking because it has to produce all this insulin. So you're going to, su supplements like PS is a pancreas supplement to help support the pancreas. Help the pancreas out while you change your diet. And then we've got uh, supplements like Sinulin. I actually didn't have any here in my office, but I'll put a link in there with Sinulin. Sinulin is another wonderful supplement to balance your uh, insulin levels, okay? But just like medication is never gonna be the total solution if you don't fix the lifestyle issue, supplements are the same thing. They can be a natural way to help with a, um, a root cause issue that needs to be built up. But ideally, you want to really create a foundation of a good diet. The keto diet is great. Uh, if you do have a cycle, eating around your cycling, your fasting and keto around your cycle is really important as well. Okay. So again, I really hope that helps because we've been asked so many questions about this. And I, as you guys know from my channel here, I never ever want you to give up on your health. Please, you were born in a miraculous body and it, you just haven't been taught how to use it. So this is what I'm doing here on my YouTube channel, trying to give you the tools so that you can start to put these pieces back together again. So leave comments, let me know what questions you have, and again, if there's more on this topic you want me to talk, talk about or anything else, put it in the comment sections. The majority of my videos are born out of this desire to answer your questions. So let me know what you're needing help with. But those of you suffering with PCOS, PCOS there you go. There are the four things you need to roll up your sleeves and go for. So as always, I hope that helps. Hey, Dr. Mindy here, and if you enjoyed this video, please share it out to the world. I'm trying to get really cutting edge health information into people's hands. And if you wanna see more videos like this, just subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates as to when I go live and new videos that I put out there. Every Thursday, by the way, I do a live video from here and answer your questions. So if there are questions you want me to answer, join me then and I'll make sure that I address them. Thanks, have an awesome day.